Okay, then let's start. Shall we start? Okay, perfect. So first question is there, um, as we have a couple of questions, if um, yeah, people are still coming in. So what is the process to decide if a proposed new component actually becomes a core component? So I guess I can take that from a product management perspective. Um, what is really important to us is to not cause too much um, duplication. If something can be done with an existing component, then we feel that we should rather improve the existing components, maybe also to be able to, to uh, address that use case rather than create new ones. Um, and then it really depends on how frequent that is required. Uh, one requirement for the core component is that they are useful for general purpose websites. So um, we don't really want to create components as core components that would be very specific to a vertical or just to a, some uh, subset of um, customers. So. Uh, all of that is basically getting in weighted um, and based on that we take the decision. It also obviously depends on our capacity. There are moments where we have more capacity, others where we are also working on other things. So that also comes into play. And then if it's a contribution, it also depends on the quality of the contribution. If that it can be taken more or less as it is, or if we feel that it's actually something that maybe should rather also be moved to a contribution of core components, because we also have that other repository for contributions where we can let things also incubate a little bit more. I don't know if Vlad, jean if you have anything to add, feel free to complete, otherwise we can move on. Yeah, on the technical side, we don't really have a formal process. Like there's no voting, there's no committee that decides that. Basically, we look at how uh, useful we think that that component would be for most of the customers. We look at how stable it is, if there are still changes in flux about that component, or if the code quality is not quite up to up to what we have for the other components, maybe we will postpone it a bit. But other than that, if a component is useful, has some traction and some usage, and it's nicely written and well uh, designed, then well, there's no reason from stopping it to be added to, to the core components themselves. Yeah, and, and a good way also to check if the component uh, is useful or can meet some uh, business requirements is to put it in the contrib if you feel like your component should go into the core components uh, let it there and wait and see how you know the the community reacts to it and if other people see needs and uh, this would be also a way to to get into the, the core components okay thank you <clears throat> And we have got the second question. Is it possible to achieve pixel perfect designs using core components? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, so we do have actually an XD file that we provide for Adobe XD, the design uh, software that's helpful for designers so that they can also design with core components in mind. And I would really recommend any customer to start with that because if you start with a design that has been thought totally outside of the box from the core components, uh, it is then harder to make the mapping between what has been designed and the core components. And sometimes it's off for no reason. There's just an arbitrary design decision that has been made. Um, maybe the CEO or whatever already approved the design and then you have no choice but to implement it as it is because maybe the validation process, you don't want to go through that in, again. Um, but other than that, um, I mean, what really matters is kind of the, not really the design, but more the features of the components um, over the design. So typically if on a teaser, we currently don't have a capability to add 
further label to the teaser. So if in your design you have labels for teasers, then you would have to either extend the component or build something different. Um, and these are the small things that sometimes kind of make or break the use of a component. The more you have these kind of small additions, the more you get off and at some point uh, you maybe want to build something different uh, instead. So yeah, I think it's not about the this pixel perfectness. Pixel perfectness is really about CSS and the core components don't provide much CSS. So I, I don't see why that could not be achieved. I think it's more about features of the core components and that in your designs you have thought within that design system kind of and with the features that this design system offers. I'll also add that you might need to change the way you approach uh, designing your web pages if you plan to make full use of the core components. We've been involved in supporting several uh, customer projects uh, and uh, we've worked with developers that still had the old way of thinking like you get these PSD files from from your designer and then you start cutting that and then once you start cutting that you imagine what kind of markup uh, would be most useful to to generate the the content structure there right so then you 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 create some mock html and then you start implementing that as a component right that that's one way of looking at it but then we we've worked with teams and we we show them how you can actually take a design and then identify blocks inside of it. And instead of cutting it in uh, in Photoshop, uh, you just try to mock at least the, the structure, the general page structure and the positioning of the main elements uh, with the existing container and uh, responsive grid and uh, start putting in some of the uh, content as existing components. And we found that usually you can cover more than 90, 95% of the of the structure uh with core components themselves without many changes uh and once you have that structure nailed in then you can start you know making it pixel perfect i have one addition as well um of course you always get at some you can get at some point to a uh, to a place where the existing core components do not fit exactly and you think okay uh, i need a new component and of course you can mix this you can always use core components which fit and then add where really is your use case add a couple of custom components for your specific needs um, for this of course it would be nice my favorite topics to reuse aspects like image and uh, link handling and this is a room where uh, this is a yeah, space where still there's some room for improvements in the core components we have a good step into this direction so link handling which then makes it easier to apply the same type of link handling in your components and uh, my next wish be to get to the same area for images as well because currently you can embed the image component but this is not so flexible it's a bit chunky to to add images like this into your custom components um but yeah besides this you're really free to mix the core components of your own custom ones okay thank you <clears throat> so next question it's actually coming for me uh it's for forms when do you plan to integrate dynamic fields depending on selected values as they had been existing with the classic UI versions of components, not the core components, but classic UI had the ability? Good question. Um, we are more focusing now actually on the um, existing components, kind of re-polishing um, them to uh, improve them. And uh, this is rather uh towards the end of our backlog so i don't know i cannot really tell yet how soon we get there um it could be something that maybe could be picked up by the community as well if you feel that uh, there could be a like uh, we also would need something for form validation before that gets submitted but there could be also another tool for kind of handling the show hiding of um, form elements to create kind of multi-step forms or stuff, such things. Um, for us, it is not on the forefront of our roadmap, to be honest. Thank you. Um, question from Conrad. Is there any roadmap for decommissioning old component versions like image version one? 
needs to take that. No, not really. Uh, we don't have a roadmap for decommissioning or removing components yet, uh, unless we come across some, some big issues that we know we won't be able to fix. We see no harm in allowing them to exist side by side for people that still need them. And even if at some point we will probably uh, take them out of the main package, they would still be maybe available in a in a you know separate package that you can install uh, if you just need those those older versions. Yeah, th this is a topic we've been discussing also within the team, and of course, it would be nice uh, that we have uh, as few as possible versions of a component. And at one point, we we said it well, might be actually nice to have like two versions at maximum, and then deprecate the first one. The, that could be we haven't decided uh, on this, but that could be an option. Also, would uh, help us uh, reduce uh, the maintenance cost of of those versions. Thank you. <clears throat> so, coming to the next question. Um, um, there are SEO features currently only available uh, on AM as a cloud service. Is there a plan to backport these features to AM on uh, on-premise? Um, if I'm not mistaken, the new SEO features, like well, you can get uh, the canonical URL of the page and alternative links and so on, uh, these are available in the in AM on-prem as well as it's part of the quick start. So I believe this is this is available already on on-prem and on AM as a cloud service also. I'm not aware of many features and the core components that would not be available on uh, on clouds on on-prem basically. Um, Thank you. Um, so, <clears throat> next question, core components are supposed to be standardized, but what is the expected compliance with the wider web standards? We know that uh, WCAG uh, compliance in particular remains an open a problem due to the number of issues open. We've been addressing these issues. Uh, we do have a plan to, to take some time every now and then and fix some, some of these issues, uh, we might even reach out and bring in more resources to the team to do that. Uh, so, so we do keep track of that. WCAG is accessibility and accessibility is, um, it's not all black and white. It's a little bit like performance. Uh, the more you search for accessibility issues, the more you find as well. And we are really trying to fix those that are found. Um, sometimes we struggle to quickly address them, but we always want to address them if they are legitimate. And um, if there is some markup that needs to be changed because it's not accessible, then we do a new version of the component, which sometimes we try to kind of push back a little bit because there are other things we would like to do as well if we happen to do a new component version. So we try to group things a little bit for that, and that's obviously delaying it. Um, however, it is important for us that the core components are accessible. We have recently fixed a big batch of accessibility issues, and we just did recently again an uh, accessibility review of the core components. So there are a lot of new accessibility issues now again on the core components, which we are now looking into when we can fix them. Uh, so yeah, it is uh, something we are following, and I think core components just need to be following that standard. Thank you. Um, a question from Masud. How does uh, core components link handler compare to WCMIO link handler? Um, does it replace it? Uh, if not, are there any plans to take over the missing parts? Yeah, it's a sort of question for myself. Um, so two years ago, we uh, announced and released our first WCMO mapping layer, the WCMO core components layer about the core components with just reusing all from core components and just injecting our media and link handling. And now with the upcoming uh, 3.0 release of core components, which is currently available as tech preview or better, or you name it, um, we already updated this and also did a first release so you can try it out. Um, in this release, 
um, our layer gets much more simpler. For example, we could remove a lot of HDL script overlays because now we can really use the same HDL script as the original core components due to this generic link handler support. Um, but we still have some, yeah, we still have a certain overlay, a certain extension in this link models part. So currently, core component is not fully pluggable to just plug in the WCMO link handling, um, but uh, yeah, we are coming closer to it. And so, yeah, you can still use the same also with the new versions that are not yet released uh, with link handler and media handler, but we still have to maintain a certain level of compatibility and uh, do some touches if new core component releases are done, which involve link and media handling and stuff like this. To be honest, we would have loved to just take the, the link handler from WCMIO and plug it into the core components. But like Stefan noticed, once we had released some, some components, then we run into the compatibility issues if we try to change things afterwards. And we'll always have some use cases that is going to be uh, going to be trickled by changes like this. That's why we took uh, a gradual approach in a way by first having a common interface in the in the core components themselves. And we hopefully uh, at some point will manage to converge and just have a drop in replacement if you want to use the WCMIO link handler or um, leave the one from the from the core components and not change much, preferably nothing at all. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, next question, who decides if a new feature to an existing core component fits uh, flexibility and loading the core? Versus, yeah, versus so loading the core, sorry. Exactly, flexibility versus load bloating. And um, the best is always when it's um, adding flexibility. Uh, we don't want to bloat the components. And um, especially also for authors, it should remain simple. We don't want the components to become like a, a plain cockpit control where you have hundreds of knobs and buttons to do everything. Um, we also don't want to, to have like options where the author need to be kind of a web developer to know how to use them. So um, this is one thing. Um, and it's a little bit then following the same principles as for new components. We want to have features that can be used a little bit like Legos, since this is a topic in, in this um, <laughs> add-up too. So yeah, if, if the features like the components play a little bit like Legos together, that you allow you to build different things as an author, you can combine them in different ways in a flexible manner. We always prefer that over very specific components and very specific features. Thank you. Um, so next question would be, why don't you leave the decision for updating core components to a newer version with the customer implementation uh, or, uh, or the implementation partner in AEM as a cloud service? You do have that decision. Uh, that is on you, even on cloud service. So what in cloud service is always up to date is that you get the latest uh, release. So you need to distinguish core component releases and com core component versions. So um, typically you have like three versions of the image component. The third one is still um, like uh, in progress, uh, tech preview, but you have many more releases of the core components. And we always update the components, but never in a breaking way, or we really try hard to not break anything there. And we have a lot of tests in place that can prevent that. Um, but so on cloud service, you always get the latest release, but it's on your implementations decision choice, which version of the release um, components you are using. If it's image V1, image V2, or image V3. One remark on this, strictly speaking, introducing a new method in any interface is or could be a breaking change. So in this case, you really have to avoid adding new stuff, which changes the interface between those major 
releases. For example, if you are using the delegation pattern to add a new model, uh, then you always have to make sure to implement at least a delegation for this new model as well, if a new method is added to the interface. Not sure if it's done currently only between those major component releases, I think not. We, I think we do use the defaults, but I'll let Vlad maybe comment on that. Yeah, we've actually switched from the default of throwing an uh, unsupported exception. Right, to, to at least having some, some empty default that allows you to not break uh, at runtime. And like Gabriel said, we do strive to, to keep compatible uh, within the same version of a component uh, between the releases. We sometimes fail, but that's just human. And usually whenever we, we come across one of these, uh, we, we try to fix it. We add more testing around it. And we try to make sure that that doesn't happen that often. Uh, the upside of having these releases pushed to you automatically on, on the cloud is that you, you get to benefit from any potential security fixes or uh, accessibility improvements, why not? And you can think of it like the foundation components were before part of the core of, of um, the quick start. So if we did, security fixes to them, you got them. Um, it's the same here. We don't change the components in aspects that would break compatibility. We don't change markup. We don't change these kind of things. There are a few enhancements we can do still, like we could add some accessibility actually to the components without breaking because there are some area labels we could add or other small enhancements like that where it's just adding an attribute that would not break compatibility and not break your website. So you do get, I think, a lot of benefits by these rolling updates. But as soon as there is a bigger change, obviously if there is a new version, as soon as there's any aspect of the component that might break. Thanks. <clears throat> so next question, when will core components stop on Ling or Apache Sling model impl so that it complies with Adobe's own rule, uh, CQPB84, uh, mostly affecting AMS users when uh, where core components are not installed by default? Most probably when we drop support for CQ64. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so next question, how can internal logic uh, how can logic, how can logic that is reused in various components be extended, changed uh, externally? With the sling delegation pattern, all components using this logic must be overwritten. Sometimes not even this is possible. Well, we are trying to identify pieces uh, in the in the common part that we could expose and have them available as some util classes. Uh, we are taking steps in this direction and that, that would allow us to remo remove some of the bloating that has accumulated in our sling models that happened. And if you saw the presentation yesterday about sling models and best practices, uh, I, we took some, some hints from that as well. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, th there's always uh, an opportunity uh, to, to see stuff that could be reused outside of the core components or by custom components. And if you see one of these places, uh, raise an issue, even better, send a contribution, let us know that you are interested in reusing that part of the code and we'll make sure to, to see how we can make that happen. I have one remark as well. I think this is really would be one of the next goals to drive the core components to currently a lot of logic, for example, looking at the image component is still embedded in the model class. Uh, it would be really great to yeah, <clears throat> somehow refactor this in a way that there's some sort of yeah, business or business logic which are used by the core components, but which can also be reused by custom components. I think this is really this is really missing currently. Of course, the hard part for this is doing the right API design for this business logic to because you have a release for this as well and cannot change it once it's done and released uh, later easily. So it's hard, but it would really be a big benefit to yeah, bridging the gap between the build and core components and custom components, which should share the same aspects uh, like you know, image link handling and other stuff like SEO and data layer support and 
partially is already there. It started um, more um, of those classes in the public API, but there's still a good way to go, I think. And just want to say we, we are aware of this limitation uh, right now. And again, as uh, Vlad said, it would be really nice to, to get uh, more community feedback on this, like uh, what are the needs actually. Uh, and so this would help us yeah, define better utils or better API that can be reused. Thank you. Um... Next question. Currently, um, the image component supports different image resolutions, normal or retina, for example. Uh, are there plans to extend the image component to also support different image variations, uh, e.g. 16 to 9 for desktop, but 1 to 1 for mobile? So that would be like a kind of uh, cropping the image um, differently on different breakpoints, I guess. Um, we don't have such support yet. You have also the dynamic media capability that might help there. Um, I mean, doing that properly is not that trivial. It's requiring that you do the cropping properly, that you understand where the interesting part of the image is. Um, how you do that, uh, you either let the author define what is the kind of place of interest in the image, or you need some AI that figures it out itself. Um, so for now, we don't support that. We rely more on the dynamic media capabilities that have been added to the image components to provide these features. From my side, I can add that it's possible with WSMA Media Handler, exactly this. This is one of the pieces where we are still more flexible than the built-in image component. And tomorrow I will have a talk at 10 uh, to show the combination of core components, WSMA Media Handler and Dynamic Media to uh, yeah, bring this all together. So yeah, probably you can see tomorrow more of it. In some previous uh, adapt to, I think maybe three years ago, I think Chris Miller is now working with Adobe. Uh, he was the, the guy behind the Sling blog uh, implementation, right? He showed maybe uh, some, some way to allow authors to define a point of focus in an image. That could be something that could be leveraged. But just one more thing to add on the image, the way we deliver right now the images with the, our custom adaptive image servlet. Uh, that's something that I would personally want to get rid of and make sure that the, the images are coming either from uh, dynamic media or from a proper CDN setup and not being streamed to AM. And that's, in my opinion, the direction we should be heading to. And we'll see how, how you know, different crops for different uh, uh, images for, for the different uh, uh, viewports fit into that. Thank you. Um, next question. Is it possible to hide internal JCR properties from the search component, e.g. author usernames uh, conversal, uh, conversely? It is possible to boost certain properties like the page title? Well, the search component is named simple search for a reason. <laughs> uh, it's it's actually just a you know a, a full text search and that's just it. We don't we don't have uh, on the roadmap something like that, unless Gabriel has has that plan. But I don't know of it. Yeah, just, in my opinion, this is really more. Uh, for, so we never used the search component of our projects. It's probably more demo component or you could do a simple possible search if you want to do a more complex search probably get inspired by it and write your own search because search is often very different from each project and sometimes even include an external search engine and not aim itself because jcr search is also a bit limited because you can only index what's in the repository but not so really visible on the page maybe be different than just the jcr content of a page this is uh, why I asked for a search engine, uh, engine integration yesterday. You probably remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so okay. what we have on the roadmap would be to have a kind of a search results 
capability with some filtering. But yeah, we don't intend the search components to be fully fleshed. Otherwise, it would kind of almost be a product of its own, like searches. You, you, you can, <laughs> it's endless. True. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, next question. Um, is there any backward incompatibility expected with uh, 3.0, like a public Java package, major minor version change? What do you need to consider from a developer's perspective when using extending core components before 3.0 is rolled out? Hopefully not. Uh, and we'll try to make sure as far as, as we can that uh, whatever you have in place and is running will not break when we switch to 3.0. It's uh, the, the way we do the, the versioning for, for the releases is uh, actually not really semantic. It's more uh, an, an indication of how much of the components have changed, right? So 3.0 for us would be a release where we have replaced or created new versions of many of the components enough that it it warrants a, a major release but we will try to to keep all the all the packages uh, uh not bump the the major version so that uh, whatever code you have running when you get this release pushed on you uh doesn't break okay thank you so for now, it's the last question as we're already out of time. <laughs> um, I would love to thank, thank you, you uh, three for answering the questions. questions. Thank, thank you all together. It was uh, very interesting. And um, as you can see, a lot of thumbs up as well and clap, clapping hands. Uh, I think it was very interesting for, for our audience as well. Thank you very much and see you soon in, in the other talks. Thanks. Bye.